Hi Thursday Bible Study! A few announcements before we get started. First, we are three sessions away from the end of this series. So we meet this week, next week, and the following week, and then normally we would break for summer. But this is not a normal year. So I invite you to think about how we want to stay connected over the summer and be creative in your suggestions. I will tell you that uh, there is no definite timeline from the church side on when we'll restart in-person gatherings. So I do expect at least for June that we'll be doing something virtually. Um, just, so just keep that in mind. You can email, call, join the 1230 Zoom Zoom meeting and we'll figure out how we might stay connected over the summer. Secondly, it's time for us to choose our fall curriculum. So be thinking about what you want to study. We normally study the Old Testament in the fall. If there is a book that you're interested in, a uh, particular, a topic that you're interested in, let me know and we'll go from there and we'll figure out what our fall series will be on. And finally, I just want to thank you all for sticking with this, even as we had to shift gears mid-season mid and go fully online. I very much applaud your dedication to this group, and I so appreciate your dedication to studying scripture and to just sticking with this as we finish out this series on the parables of Jesus. So now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Welcome back to Thursday Bible Study. My name is Cassie Waits, and I am so glad that you're part of our conversation today. We are opening with a hymn as we always do, but today we have a special treat. We're welcoming Jean Burnett on the piano. So let's join our voices together as we sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. continuing our study of the parables this week, and I am excited to welcome Reverend Joe Evans, who will lead us through our study of Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Hi, Thursday Bible Study. I am uh, I'm honored to be with you today um, once again, and I hope that you are all doing well. That's certainly my prayer for you and for your family and for all those who you love. I am um, excited to bring you a very, uh, or, or to discuss with you a very appropriate parable for the strange season in our lives. Um, it, it's, uh, the, the, this coronavirus and the social distancing and the quarantine is putting all kinds of things in rather harsh perspective and certainly it has felt as though our lives have been interrupted by um, not the creek rising, um, not not the not the flood coming in, but but something something very much like that, something equally disruptive, which is hard for me and maybe for you because uh, once something is on my calendar, 
I'm pretty much going to do it. Like, I, I, I don't like to cancel things. One of the hardest things for me to do in the whole world is to uh, cancel or back out of an appointment or an obligation. Part of the reason that, part of the reason for that is that I, I love what I do. I don't want to miss the chance to lead a Bible study or to, to miss the chance to meet a member of our church. Um, so when this quarantine started weeks ago, it was it was painful for me to have to cancel lunches and meetings, um, though, though in a manner of speaking, the creek had risen. Uh, that, that's a wonderful expression that our author uses. I'll see you again tomorrow, the Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Um, I, I heard once, I think maybe it was Jimmy Carter who, who pointed out that, that really this expression doesn't point to um, a creek of water, but the creek, the, the Native American tribe, um, who would rise up and, and disrupt whatever civilized settlers had put down on their schedules. Um, regardless, the truth is that our lives are rather tentative. Our plans are tentative. Our, our very existence is far more fragile than any of us would like to admit. And if we build our houses on the sand, then we are fools. Now let's go now to the, the scripture lesson, a parable from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. And as we prepare to read scripture, let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that the ancient words of scripture would come to life once again before us that as we gather to discuss this parable, our minds would be illuminated by the, the great gift of wisdom. We pray for the gift of your Holy Spirit that these ancient words would come to life, that we would, that we would be able to see your word come to life around us, and that we would hear your voice speak to us words of truth transforming words of truth. These things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is your word incarnate. Amen. Again, our scripture lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last January, at our church's annual officer and staff dinner, I verbalized a challenge that had been on my mind for, for months. Um, I, I verbalized the challenge that our church grow by 500 members in five years. And after I made that statement, uh, I'm not sure that many people heard anything else that I said. I, I remember saying this and then watching um, mouths hang open and, and people asking <laughs> their spouses, did he really say what I think he just said? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I did. And I want to tell you why and because I believe it relates to our parable. Uh, a couple joined our church and soon after, her husband was diagnosed with cancer. He went from being perfectly well and healthy to hospice care in the blink of an eye. Their, um, their families live in another country. They have, no, they have no children. So when this man died, our, our church gathered around his widow knowing that she needed us and, uh, and knowing that this is exactly what churches are for. They brought her food. People brought her food. People gathered around her. She attended our grief care group. And she since told me multiple times, Joe, I believe God led me to this church. 
so that there would be people around to help me through this dark time. I believe that exactly. How else can anyone make it through the great tragedies of life without a family of faith and a message of hope? Yet, read the obituaries in the Marietta Daily Journal and see how many die without a, without a church and without a pastor. Those of us who have always been a part of a church family like ours might, might wonder, what are they thinking? How will their surviving spouses make it through grief without a community of support to gather around them? I don't know, but so many are, are walking exactly this kind of tightrope. Tragedy is lurking in their house, the house that they live in, is built on sand. That's why I challenge the church officers and staff to help this church grow by 500 members in five years. It's because less and less people join churches while the need for what we have to offer them has stayed exactly the same. And I believe deeply that we are obligated to reach out to at least 500 people in the next five years just so that they will have the support and the hope that we can provide when the water rises around them. What's certain is that sooner or later, the water will rise. And we can't do anything about that. We can't do anything about the rising tide. What we can do is invest in the relationships which will sustain us. Relationships with each other, and especially relationships with our Lord. May it be so with you. May it be so with me. Thank you for being part of Thursday Bible Study. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, be gracious to you, and give you peace.